Okay, guys. Sorry, um, we're going to continue with trig equation solving, but this time we're going to um, solve the equation with compound angles. So equation with compound angles. All right. So what does that mean? With equation with compound angles. Um, so start with the first example here. So say for example, tangent two x is equal to the square root of 3. And the question asks you to work out x that's between 0 and um, 360 degrees. Now, um, you have noticed that this is tangent 2x. It's not tangent x, right? 2x. How do we solve question with component angle this time? Well, from the previous lessons, I remember I told everyone that you've got four steps to follow, right? The first step is to pay attention to the domain. The second step is you use your calculator or special angle table to work out the first angle. And the next step is use all station to central to work out the second angle. And the last step is depend on the domain, you're going to plus or minus 360 degrees to work out the remaining, right, remaining angles. How do we solve questions with compound angles? So for example, this is not an x anymore, that's 2x, can be half x, can be x plus 45, can be x minus whatever the angle is. Um, how do we do it? There's only one extra, you know, extra step that you need to do. That step here is, depends on what is this number here, right? It could be x, 2x, 3x, 4x, half x. The first step is you do need to change the domain, all right? The question asks you to find x, and x is between 0 and 360, but this time you've got 2x. You're going to treat this as like a one single term, all right? So you're going to change the domain, eh? To 2x. Alright, how do I change it? Well, that's x to 2x. You multiply by 2. So 0 times by 2, still 0. 360 times by 2, 720. So that is the new domain. You are going to find the answers to between, between 0 and 720 degrees for 2x. And once you finish that, we can divide everything by 2 to work out the value of x. And that way, we can actually work out everything between 0 and 360 degrees. So let's start to work this now. All right, this one out. So second step, 2x is equal to tangent inverse root 3. So 2x is equal to 60 degrees. All right, 60 degrees. Now after you finish this, all right, this is where the common mistake. Do not divide this answer by 2, please. Do not divide it. Don't divide this answer by 2 and give you 30 degrees and start to use this as your first answer to work out all the answers. No, no, no. Never do that, okay? 2x, remember this is a group. That is the first answer for 2x. You're going to find all the answers for 2x that's between 0 and 720 degrees. So we're going to keep continue to do it. How do I do it? Well, the second angle, this is tangent. So the second angle is going to be 180 plus... The first angle that's the second angle all right so that's still 2x is equal to 60 degrees and that's 240 degrees now we'll continue all right 240 240 is still less than 720 so let's continue to do that um so the next one will be um 360 degrees plus the angles there so it's 360 plus 60 all right 360 plus 60 and that gives you what do you get? All right, you get 420. Keep going. 420, still less than 720. All right, how do I keep going? All right, that's your first angle. That's your second angle. Um, this is the, the third angle after you plus the first one by 360. Then your fourth angle, you're going to plus 240 by 360. All right, and that, that gives you, um, should be 600 degrees. Now, you can continue. You can plus this number by 360 again, but hopefully you realize that it's greater than 720, so we should stop. So now this is the answer for 2x. So 2x is equal to 60, 240, 420, and 600. But remember, we are solving for x, not 2x, we're solving for x. So you've got one more step to do. And that's divide every single angle by 2. So now you divide 30, 120, 210, and 300, uh, 300 degrees. And that's all the answers for that equation. 
Now, this is really important, all right? Make sure you do not divide it by two um, when you first work out the first angle here. Continue to work out every single angle before you divide everything by a number that's in front of the x, or you times by the number in front of x, depends on whether you get like a half or you get two. But you only do that after this, you know, after you finish finding all the angles. Um, otherwise, if you find this angle first and try to use this first angle to work out all the other angles, then it's not going to be correct. All right, we're going to do, uh, this is an example one. We're going to do another example. Um, so to show you what's happening if we have a number that's maybe like, you know, half X or even a quarter X, how do we do the question? All right. All right, so let's do an example two. Um, sign X, oh no, sign half X, yep, sign half X um, is equal to uh, square root of two over two. And the question asks you to work out the answer from zero degrees to um, 360 degrees. All right, now pay attention to this is half X, that's X. So what we need to do as usual we're going to change the domain to half x. And that means we're going to divide everything by 2, or times everything by half, and that's 180. So you only need to find the answer between 0 and 180 degrees for half x. All right, let's start to do the calculation. So half x is equal to sine inverse root 2 over 2. Half x is equal to 45 degrees. All right, it's equal to 45 degrees, and that's half x. Now we need to continue to find all the answers between 0 and 180, so I guess you've got another answer, which is 180 minus 45, because remember all station 2 central, and that's a sign, so the second angle is 180 minus 45, which gives you 135 degrees, so that's half x. Alright, 135 is less than 180, same always a 45 degree is less than 180, so that's the answer we have. Now do we need to plus 360? Um, of course not. All right, otherwise it's going to be greater than 180 degrees. Now, once you finish that, don't forget you still have to times everything by 2. All right, remember we are finding x, we're not finding half x. So that becomes 90 degrees. And then we'll times by everything by 2 here, that becomes 270 degrees. And then uh, that should be our answer for this question here. All right, so pretty simple. All right, pretty simple to do. All right, we're going to do another example where um, it's not half x or 2x. It will be something like, you know, x plus 60 degrees or x plus 100 degrees um, or x minus something degrees. And how do we do a question like that? All right, so example three. Um, let's do a cosine question here. x minus, um, mm, let's do a minus 180 degrees, yeah, let's do 180 degrees, and is equal to half, all right, and then the answer will be from negative 180 to um, positive 180, something like this, all right, if the question asks you to find x between negative 180 to positive 180, all right, to make the question slightly harder, I will change that to seven, you know, um, to 360 degrees, all right, to make this one a bit harder and interesting for everyone to solve. So how would, how would you do this one? Mm, first step, that's x minus 180. That's just x. So change that x. All right, change x to x minus 180. So you're going to minus this answer by 180. That becomes 360. And you're going to minus this one by 180. That's 180. So now you need to find the answer between negative 360 to positive 180. All right, remember we're going to group this, all right? This is a one entire group, group them, and that's cos inverse half. So x minus 180 degrees is cos inverse half is 60 degrees. Now again, do not move this 180 over and try to work out the first answer, no. You're going to find all the answer first before you plus everything by 180 degrees. Find every answers. Um, between zero, um, negative 360 to positive 180, everything, okay? So that's cosine. So the second angle you're going to get is 360 minus 60. So that's 60 degrees, that's 300 degrees. 
Now, have a look at here. It's 300. It's 300 degrees is greater than 180. Which means that's not the answer, right? That's no, no, that's not the answer right now. But does that mean we only have one answer? Mm, no. We can also have the answers on the native side. So now what we need to just be really careful and we're going to start to minus the angles, right? Even this is not an answer, we might need to use this one for the later uh, angles. So we're going to minus this number by 360. Okay, and that gives us a negative 300 degrees, which is still within the domain, and that's good. And I'm going to minus this answer by 360. And that's negative 60 degrees. That's still pretty good, okay? And it's still within the domain. So the only answer we don't need is that 300. All right, we don't need that 300. For our final answers, we don't need it. But we do need that 300 to do the calculation for our force angle. So once we have that, we have 60 degrees, we have negative 300, we have negative 60. And that's all within the domain right now, the new domain. So now we can work out the final answer for X. We're going to plus every answer by 180 degrees. So plus this one by 180, 240. Plus that one by 180, negative 120. And plus last one by 180, um, positive 120. And that would be the answer, all right, that satisfies the original domain, which is negative 180 to positive 360. You can rewrite your answer in ascending order. Um, it will be better. I still recommend everyone to do it. In exam, it's just easier for the examiner to mark your answers. All right, that's that's how you do it. You know, if this is not 2x, 3x, it's, you know, x minus 180. Um, the idea is still the same. What you need to do is to find the new domain. All right, by modifying the domain and work out the answer according to the new domain. And after you finish it, you simply time up uh, times divide plus or minus the angles there. All right, so this is an example three. So now what I'm going to do is to do something that's, you know, slightly different. Every question you're looking at right now is with only one trigger ratio. It's either sine or cos or ten. Or it could be the other three ratios, sect, cosect, cotangent. But what happens if we have more than one? What happens if we have more than one trigger ratio in the question? How do we solve it, right? So let's remove that. And let's call that equation with more than one trig ratios. All right, more than one trig ratios. All right. Um, start with an easy one. Um, start with this one here. Sin x plus cos x is equal to one. Right, something that's really easy. All right, something that's very simple and easy. And the question asks you to find x between zero and um, and three hundred and sixty degrees. All right, so what do we do? All right, so at this stage, I can only teach you the way, um, which is well. I guess this method is pretty okay. All right, but I do need to teach you. And okay, there's another way you, you you need to know how to do it. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to teach you this method, all right, because you haven't learned the other formula. All right, so what do we do? All right, the idea behind it is we can't really solve equations with two trig ratios, right? What we need to do is to change two trig ratios to one, all right? So either to sine or cosine or 10 or something else. Uh, but you can't have two trig ratios in one equation. It has to be one, all right? So how, how do you do it? I'm going to divide, okay, everything by cos x. Okay, cosine x. Um, probably I need to change this question um, slightly because otherwise you can't really do it. So let's change that to zero, okay? Change that to zero so you, you can do it. Yep, that should work. All right, so divide everything by cosine x. So if we divide everything by cosine x, um, that gives us sine x over cos x plus one is equal to zero. Now the reason you can't do the, the other question when this is equal to one is because um, this method is not going to work, all right? You need something else to help you to solve it. So at this stage, we'll only focus on the question where you just do division, all right? We divide by cosine x. Now, we need to make sure that cosine x is not equal to zero, 
All right? Because if it's equal to zero, it's not going to work. We know we can't divide anything by zero. But once you finish that, you get tangent x, and you move the one over, it's equal to minus one. And that's that's it. All right. So you can you can see we've got. Now uh, we just do one step. We change one trig for equations with two trig ratios to the trig equations with one trig ratio. So we've got tangent x is equal to minus one. Now we can start to solve this equation like we're normally solving it. So 10 inverse minus one, and x is equal to, I think it's negative 45 degrees, um, but let me do double check. Yes, that's negative 45 degrees. All right, now continue with your work because negative 45 is not in the domain. So the second angle is 180 plus negative 45. All right, and um, that is positive 135 degrees. And we do have more. We can plus this angle by 360. So it's 360 plus minus 45, and that is um, 315 degrees. All right, so therefore the final answer, x, is equal to, now we're not going to use this as the answer. That's not the answer yet. All right, that's not the answer because um, negative 45 is not in the domain. So the only answer we have is 135 degrees and 315 degrees. All right, so that's how you solve questions with uh, my two trig ratios in it. Um, I'm just going to find another question um, to help you to understand a bit more about how to do a question like this. Um, let's see. Ah, okay, that's another good one. All right, so we're going to remove this question here and we're going to try another example. All right, so... How would you do questions when we have two trig ratios and in this time the question is like that. Square root of three sine x plus cos x is equal to zero. All right, now very, very similar to the previous um, trig questions, right? Very similar, all right? The idea behind it is we are going to divide everything by, um, by um, maybe cosine x or by sine x. Again, it's really up to you. Um, I prefer that you actually divide everything by cosine x, so it's just, you know, you get tangent x. So if we divide everything by cos x, then we're going to get square root of three, 10 x plus one is equal to zero. And then uh, that gives you square root of three, 10 x is equal to minus one, and 10 x is equal to minus one over root three. Okay, and I do need to give you the, the domain, so it's between 0 degrees and 360 degrees. That is the domain, and once we've finished that, we're going to continue with the normal working, right? So by now, you should be able to work out the answer quite quickly. So tangent inverse, the negative square root of 1 over 3, and it's equal to, um, I, I think that's negative 30 degrees, but let's check. Use our calculator, it should be negative 30 degrees. Yes, it is equal to negative 30 degrees. And then we'll move on to the next angle, right? So plus 180, that's 150. And then plus 360, that's 330. All right. And then the final answer will be these two answers here. Because as you can see, that satisfy the domain. All right. That's not the answer yet. All right. So pretty simple. All right. Pretty simple. Um, nice question. Simply divided by cosine x. You can divide everything by sine x if you want. And that just means you're going to get a cotangent x, and it's just a bit like annoying if you get um, the other three trig ratios if you try to solve trig um, equations. All right, I'd like to do one more this one. All right, one more question, and um, we're going to do sort of like finish trig equations this time. Um, there are also other ways to solve trig equations, but I will talk about this one in the future lessons. All right, so. How about this question here? How about tangent square x plus, um, to make the question slightly better, so six tangent x plus five equals to zero. How about that one? That's a really interesting one, all right? You've got square. Now, I hope that you realize that's quadratic, actually. All right, you've got square, you've got tangent. Um, that's quadratic, that's a plus six a plus five. Quadratic equation. So the first step, if you really can't see it, you can just replace the tangent x by another letter. Just call that A. So then you get A squared plus 6A plus 5 is equal to 0. 
Now you can solve that quadratic equation. All right, so that's a plus five, a plus one is equal to zero. So now you have a equals to minus five, a equals to minus one. All right, so once you get a equal to minus five, a equal to minus one, you can actually start to solve tricky equations. So then, because previously we let tangent x is equal to a, so now tangent x is equal to minus five. And then tangent x is equal to minus one. All right, we can solve these two equations. And let's just say x is between the zero and 360 degrees again. All right, so what you need to do is start to solve this equation side by side. Um, it's like you're solving two equations. All right, um, pretty sure it's pretty easy to solve tangent inverse negative one, all right? So that's actually equal to negative 45 degrees for the first one. And then you can plus this number by 180, that's 135, and then plus this number by 360, and that's 315. So therefore, according to the domain, x is equal to 135, 315. All right, that's the answer on, on this side. Now we need to work out the answer on that side here. All right, so therefore, that's equal to tangent inverse minus 5. So x is equal to. Use your calculator, it's not a special angle, so that is equal to minus 79 degrees. Let's do to the nearest degree, minus 79 degrees. But again, I need to continue working this answer here. I need to plus this number by 180 degrees. Again, remember, according to all station to central. So that would be 100, um, 101. And then um, we're going to do the rotations. We're going to plus this answer by um, 360. And that gives us 281 degrees. Now, we have everything. So, you're going to combine all the answers together, all right? And I suggest you to write in ascending order. So, the smallest angle right now is 101 degrees. And the second one is 135. And then 281. And then 315. And that would be the answer to this equation here. So I hope you can see here, all right, they can give you a tricky equation, but they can give you a tricky equation in the format of like quadratic. Or later, they can even give you cubic equations, but that's in terms of trigonometry as well. So you do need to be able to know how to solve quadratic equation, make sure you know how to factorize it, and then to follow the, you know, the tricky equation method to solve those tricky equations. All right, there are more interesting tricky equations that I would like to show you in the future lessons. Right now, I think that's enough for you to understand how to solve some simple, tricky equation. Um, yeah, I will see you guys next lesson. All right, thank you.